Well, hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Anabaptist Perspectives. I'm here in York, Pennsylvania with Clayton Shank, and you have started a school here in the city of York, Pennsylvania. Uh, and you, I think there's also a church you've been heavily involved with for the last while. Um, can you just start by telling us some about this city? What unique aspects does it have? What makes this city really tick? York, like many other inner city, uh, inland cities, mm-hmm. are, is a dying city. That is, oh. it's declining in population. But at one point, York had 60,000 people, and today there are 43,000 people. Whoa. And so Caterpillar, Alice Chalmers, Mac, all of those manufacturing jobs have more or less disappeared. Harley Davidson is still here. Mm-hmm. But a lot of the manufacturing jobs have left York. Mm-hmm. One of the things that really ma- makes York unique, and we're only across the river from Lancaster, so mm-hmm. you, you, just an hour you can be in Lancaster. But William Penn, when he bought the land from the Indians. Mm-hmm. He uh, promised that nobody would ever settle west of the Susquehanna River. Mm-hmm. So uh, Lancaster, filling up with people. Uh, in 1783, there was about 581 people in Lancaster, and they were sure that was too full. <laughs> they were <laughs> sure they had to go somewhere else. And so they began to come over, and the Indians complained and went to Harrisburg and the National Guard came down and physically took the settlers back to Lancaster wow. County. And so <clears throat> the people of York, uh, traditionally way, way back, you know, 250 years ago, were the rebels, were the ones who were defying an agreement with uh, William Penn. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so mm-hmm. uh, th- now a lot of people went to Chambersburg, which was far enough west that the Indians didn't care about that. But the ones right here in New York County, really cared about that treaty that William mm-hmm. Penn made. And, but York, uh, the Articles of Confederation were settled here. Mm-hmm. Continental Congress met here for seven months during the Revolutionary War. Wow. And so there's a number of historic things that happened here, but it, it has an interesting root. And mm-hmm. so in the book, uh, Taking Our Cities for God, uh, mm-hmm. Dawson says that there's a spirit behind every city. And, and you, if you're gonna be a missionary to the city, you should figure out what that spirit is. Well, one of the spirits here is that mm. spirit of rebellion, or spirit of, no, we're not going to listen to the treaty. We're not going to listen and honor what was mm-hmm. happened there. Okay, so tell me about like, how long have you lived here? Um, when did you move? And in uh, early '80s, when I, I was born, '60, so mm-hmm. '80, I was 20 years old, and I wanted to do some BS somewhere. I wanted to mm-hmm. uh, figure out how to uh, serve the Lord, and I volunteered my time actually at the Lancaster radio station. Uh, it's now really? called WJTL, but back then it was WPTG, and I served my nine months of VS mm-hmm. as an evening board operator, and I had hmm. a program there, a Children's Good Night program. I played the Moody stories. One of the stories I played was Dwight Moody's uh, story, and mm-hmm. when he <clears throat> became a Christian, he wanted to, to teach Sunday school class. I didn't have a Sunday school class for him, so he said, well, if you let me find the boys, will you give me a, a room? And they mm-hmm. agreed. So eventually he had four rows that he rented, and he had filled up with boys, and he had a, his own boys' school. They had two weeks of summer Bible school here, and mm-hmm. my girlfriend, now my wife, was one of the uh, Bible school teachers. Monday night was my night off from the radio, and so I came along with her, and she had no scholars in uh, fourth grade. Nobody showed up that night. Hmm. So she said, oh, should I just, should we, let's go to the adult class. I said, no, let's do what Dwight Moody did. And so we went down the streets and went around, are you in fourth grade? 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 <laughs> <laughs> and so we, uh, by the end of the two weeks, she had the biggest class. She had 12 fourth graders. <laughs> and they said, we got to get that guy here. And, we, <laughs> whoever there. and so they, uh, they started hounding me. <laughs> Will you come to York? Come to York. Come to York. And I, like, they don't realize all I was doing was what I learned from somebody else. Yeah. I, I'm yeah. not very original in many things. I, <laughs> I hear from other people and I say, well, I just did what the white movie did. So mm-hmm. I, I agreed to come uh, for one year. Actually, they asked, will you come for six months? Just, just come for six months. So mm-hmm. that's all I agreed to was six months. I've been here for t- 35 years now. I came as a Sunday school teacher and then summer Bible school superintendent. And mm-hmm. when they talked about ordination, I was ordained Pastor. Mm-hmm. Did you help start this school then? Was this here already? The uh, church was up the street. Mm-hmm. The church building was there. And this was a uh, building that was a uh, handicap a daycare center for handicapped adults. They had an open house and I came through and I said, if, if you ever uh, want to sell, mm-hmm. I'd like to have a school someday. I'd like to start a school. 
uh, Jay Fox from Reading was encouraging us to get a school sure. started and telling us the advantages of a school. And so um, he called me one day and he said, hey, we're going to move out. Uh, you, you may assume the mortgage. Just take over the mortgage and you can have the building, $70,000. Wow. And I said, well, that's, that's very kind of you, but uh, we're not going to go in debt. We're, mm -hmm. we're just not going to go in debt. And so um, we'll have to pass up the offer. A year and a half later, he called and said, my uh, tax account tells me I can give you the uh, building at half price, and so give me thirty or thirty-five thousand, you can have it. And I said, Do I get to choose which one of those two? <laughs> he said, Of course. You know. I said, Well, that's very kind and generous, but um, no, we're not going to go in debt. So I, I can't take it. We decided that by July first, mm. if we have five thousand dollars in a, a fund for the school, and we have three students and one teacher will start this year, but July 1st is the day, is the wow. year that we're going to we're going to start. So that was sort of the fleece, you know, mm. those three things by July 1st. July 1st, we had no money, no teachers, no students. <laughs> so I was like, okay, well, forget that. Well, on July 3rd, the, he called back and he said, I don't want that building for one more year. It's a headache. Mm. You may have it. Just take it. If you, if you pay closing costs, you may have the building. I said, I'm very, very interested. <laughs> That's the deal. Whoa. <laughs> so, praise God, right? We got the building. I have this little um, enclave. You know, mm -hmm. we have a church building, a school building, three houses. My son owns a house on the block. One day, <clears throat> somebody called the police and they s complained here. Something, something was happening in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Neighbors were being loud or whatever. And they said, hey, the church has that block. That's the church block. You taught the church. <laughs> really? <laughs> so that was 911's response. Uh, wow. just, just go tell the church. And so we started saying, oh, well, if that's how it is, uh, <laughs> we're going to have to become more active and more, you know. And so uh, uh, one of our neighbors can just barely walk, uh, really uh, handicapped, but she doesn't have a handicapped parking. So I got blue paint, we painted the sidewalk, we put up a little sign, you know, no parking. And we put a crosswalk so our children can walk across. We're like, oh, okay. Well, and so, how has this neighborhood received you? I'm sure it's been a, a progression. You've been here for quite a while, but you're you're always going to have some who are just real happy to see you, mm -hmm. and some who are like, what, "What's going on here?" You know, mm -hmm. yeah. There are there are mm -hmm. some who your your question was, "How did we get received?" Right? Yeah, as yeah. long as we just smile and we're happy and we're mm -hmm. cleaning up the neighborhood and we're having uh, parties and uh, block parties and, and those kind of things, um, everybody's happy. Mm -hmm. But when we begin to uh, preach on the street corners and do uh, track distributions and those mm -hmm. kind of things. Uh, not everybody's happy. Yeah, you're you're for, you're forcing them to confront. Um, what does the Bible say? And okay, so the Bible says this. I have to deal with that. And I think sometimes people don't like it. That's right. They would just be. I'd rather just live my life mm -hmm. and not have to face these things. Just ignore them. At Sattler College, our goal is to produce well-rounded students who, as the scriptures say, can rightly handle the word of truth. To do this, we integrate discipleship with academic excellence. For our academics, we believe in implementing a rigorous and well-defined Christian core curriculum. These are classes that everyone takes regardless of your major. These classes include expository writing, oral communication, history, biology, and statistics. But in addition to that, every student will also take courses in Old Testament, New Testament, apologetics, biblical Greek, biblical Hebrew, and church history. You get those classes regardless of your major. For more information, please schedule a call with our admissions team, download a course catalog, or even better, come visit our Boston campus. So tell us about the different ways that you've been able to engage with this city. You've already went into some of those, but what are some projects you've done and especially um, how were they received? Um, maybe the difficulties you might have had. How, how did you overcome these? You know, especially since you have so much experience. You, you, mm -hmm. have, you have been here a while, mm -hmm. you know. Um, yeah, go into some of that. One of the things that we have in the city is tremendous fear of criminals. Hmm. So uh, um, when, when something goes wrong, nobody wants to be a snitch. Nobody mm -hmm. wants to, to tell. We don't go out of the way to, to inform people, we, but we don't lie. Mm -hmm. And so when a police officer said, did you see something? The answer is yes. Mm -hmm. You know, this is what we saw. The state of Pennsylvania passed a law that if you sell drugs within a thousand feet of a school, 
you automatically get five years. Um, wow. And so the city plots where the schools are, and they say, oh, Titans of Peace here, that's wonderful because now they're a thousand that? feet and this thousand feet, uh, so don't move, don't, don't stay where you're at because <laughs> we, need, we need you right there. We had across the street uh, fire. Uh, it didn't uh, affect our houses, but the ones right, between, right next door to us mm -hmm. affected it. And then um, I read in the newspaper next day that the uh, fire marshal rolled at arson. Mm. And so I looked at our security cameras and you could see the, the three teenagers going into the house next door, the yard next door, mm -hmm. and leaving. And about five minutes later, the fire truck's coming. And so I said, I called the police and I said, I uh, might have some information you would like to see on our security cameras. And they said, yes, yes. And so <laughs> they saw this. When they put that in the newspaper, the picture, one frame of these three guys walking, it was very obvious it was our house. It was, it was mm -hmm. the teacher's house. It was the girl's house. It was their car. And so anybody who knows the neighborhood could know mm -hmm. who, who was working with the police on that one. Mm -hmm. That was Wednesday morning that was put out and they're asking anybody who knows these guys, please let us know. Thursday night Bible school, we had a couple of the children who were acting rowdy. And so two of our staff members walked this child home. Mm -hmm. And as they walked, uh, they, they delivered the child and they were coming back to school. They met three young men perpendicularly uh, and they, they passed them. And about 25 feet beyond that, they turned around and shot at them. Mm. And one, the girl got uh, three holes in her dress, right? Wow. And so uh, the police like, oh, I had nothing to do, nothing to do with, uh, <laughs> with the e-reporting. Uh, uh -huh. Yeah, it's like, well, I, I don't believe that, right? But I am. Mm -hmm. So um, we were at prison next week, next uh, week later. And I was, uh, as soon as I walked in, the guy's like, oh, you're the guys with the, the camera. You're the guys <laughs> that, uh, well, thank you. That was my brother's house that burned, right? Wow. And so he was grateful for it. Well, I said, well, I have a question for you. Was that right for us as a church to have cameras? Because mm -hmm. all of a sudden there was this debate, you know. Mm -hmm. um, oh, no, 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 you shouldn't have had cameras. Like, oh, well. And so the prisoners mm -hmm. themselves were, some, like, yeah, you should have cameras. Interesting. Camera. No. Uh -huh. I said, well, <clears throat> um, if it's right for us to have cameras, was it right for us to call the police? No, 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 no. no. Pretty well universal, except for this one whose brother was house mm -hmm. burned. He was, he was on our side the whole way. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, some agree we could have cameras, but we shouldn't have called the police. I said, well, mm -hmm. then what do we do with that information, right? Mm -hmm. Well, you should have called, you should have gone and talked to the guys. You should have just, but mm -hmm. I said, I don't know who they were, right? I, I didn't know who they were. What was I supposed to do? I would tell you another interesting part of this. I told mm -hmm. the prisoners that these, about this two staff members getting shot at and, and mm -hmm. the girl, and they almost came out of their seats, the whole thing. I was like, you need to run. You got to get out of town, man. You're you're high. Your day is up. You're you go. Really? You leave. And I said, but why? Greater is he that is in me than he is mm -hmm. in the world. All right. Mm -hmm. There's nothing going to happen to us unless God says, okay, I'm gonna lift the hedge. Why do we run? Right? We, yeah. We're as secure as can be here. Is it dangerous? Yes. Have we been shot at? Yes. One day mm -hmm. I came in into school, and uh, I'm coming the back door through the gym. And my teachers come running into the gym and they're shooting at us, they're shooting at us. Well, somebody shot yeah. three holes in our front window. And mm -hmm. uh, that particular, like in six months, we had 29 gun incidences in this neighborhood, 29 mm -hmm. different situations. Some shooting, some just that we saw a gun, right? We mm -hmm. mark it up as a, I think. Yeah, there's times, yeah, you think about it, you have children, but we have to remember that the hedge of protection and, and the, mm -hmm. the Job, nothing could happen to Job unless God lifted the hedge. Yeah. And, and, and so you're safe and you're guarded and you're protected. And That's important to remember because, well, because one question I have then, like what encouragements do you have for people watching this who may want to get involved in their own city or, or maybe move to, to a ministry in the city? Obviously, fear plays into a lot of this. You know, people are scared of some of the mm -hmm. things that happen in cities. Yeah, what would you say to encourage them? Uh, listen to the Pineapple Story series. <laughs> okay, okay, we'll put a link to that. Yeah, yeah that's, that's a good point. Mm -hmm. Otto Koning, uh, what a powerful, powerful testimony mm. of he was over there with the headhunters, he was over there with the rattlesnakes and the poisonous whatever, and nothing can happen to us. Uh, and Job, read the book of Job. I mean, mm -hmm. I just, it's a powerful house. One day I said, 
say, God, would you just show your power? I, I was laying in bed, I woke up, and I, just show your power. Lift the head just a little bit, just so I can see your power. It was a stupid prayer. Never pray. <laughs> never, don't, never, don't do that. Because you know, uh -huh. my son trips and falls, and we had to go to the hospital. Right? Wow. So, no, no, no. Now I pray, dear God, make it higher, <laughs> make yeah. it wider. Yeah. You know, Otto was such an encouragement to me uh, to, to recognize that I am safe when I'm mm -hmm. in the midst of God's will, and wherever mm -hmm. I'm at, there's nothing mm -hmm. going to harm me. There's nothing going to get me. I'm still human, right? Okay, he's not sure, in flesh. Sure. So I, I've been, I'm pretty comfortable in this neighborhood. People know me. I, I've mm -hmm. been here back and forth. We go from here going across town to our house. But I was on the west side. I was in an area I wasn't sure about. I wasn't a neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And here comes two guys coming toward me. I don't know who these guys are. Oh, boy. <laughs> and so I started, and I, immediately God brings to mind, peace be still. The, the song, you know, and, and I started singing it. And just great peace came upon me. Uh, it's just a tremendous thing. All right, one day I heard that Satanists, their um, service lasts till about two or three in the morning. I forget what to one. Wow. And then the last thing they do in their service is they cast spells on Christian pastors. Hmm. And so the speaker who told me this said, if you ever wake up and you look at your clock and it's three o'clock, you know that you just got attacked by Satan, mm -hmm. right? And these Satanists just attacked you. I'm like, I. I get up three o'clock lots of times. <laughs> lots, lots of times. I <laughs> oh, look at my oh my. It's three o'clock. Okay. So I began to pray before I went to bed. I say, Dear oh. God, put a mirror around me. Make this hedge a mirror so that mm -hmm. any uh, weapon from the enemy that comes my way is reflected back to their camp. Mm -hmm. Right? And so and I sleep through three o'clock. I hardly ever get up at three o'clock anymore. No kidding. So, yeah, there's this, there's this awesome protection. One day we, uh, we met with a demon possessed person and yeah I reckon oh boy now you're into controversy <laughs> <laughs> yeah. person. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I mean, that's, I, I, that's a whole other story but this uh, I walked in the room after a number of times right mm -hmm. there was a number of encounters and I walked in the room and she said I hate you well I, I knew by that time that I'm talking to a demon and also mm -hmm. an individual I said you don't hate me you hate Jesus Christ who lives inside of me uh, mm -hmm. they were talking this well, through that whole experience, and, mm -hmm. uh, and it's a long, long story, right? But mm -hmm. through that whole experience, the power that we have in Jesus, the, the protection we have in Jesus, the fact that they couldn't even touch me. There was another mm -hmm. lady, demon-possessed, riding on the floor. She was crawling on the floor, and there was four or five of us there uh, kneeling, praying. We're forming a straight line, and she's going back and forth uh, along the sink and the re stove and the refrigerator, back and forth, just uh, screaming and hollering. Mm -hmm. And, but she couldn't touch us. There was no way she could touch us. Um, there was a young boy uh, one time, he called me Slick. I, I don't know, that was my nickname back then. But they said, <laughs> Slick, <laughs> I can hit you. His nose is about this far from my nose. Yeah, he was really, really bad at me. Mm. And I said, you can't touch me. You can't touch me unless God lets you. Mm. And just mm. the confidence that that is. Now, yeah, sure. There's days we can go, oh, mm -hmm. oh, look, look, here's who's coming. Uh, I think my number is up, you know, but, mm -hmm. <laughs> but yet there's so many times when I look back, so many times being here in this city where I see God's power, God's mm -hmm. protection, God's way. And I could go a long, long time telling you about many, many stories of God's protection. Mm -hmm. And, and I have hundreds of stories I don't even know about because mm -hmm. I don't even know how many times God protected me. I wasn't aware of it. Oh, yeah. I got to tell you this next one. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> there was a... Uh, uh, young lady who uh, came to Christ and she went home and told her boyfriend we can't go to bed together anymore we're, until we're married we can't go to bed so um, we were living upstairs above the church mm -hmm. and <clears throat> uh, we're in the back apartment and I hear these footsteps I hear the, hear the somebody coming up coming back the hall towards my door but nobody knocked and all of a sudden I hear running running down the steps, slamming the door. And I'm like, oh, that's strange. Well, I'm gonna go find out what's going on. So I walk out <clears throat> and I go downstairs. Well, here, Ivan and Arlene are having a Bible study with, with Emma and, and uh, Gloria. So the four of them are saying, oh, Clayton, we're glad to see you. I said, yeah. Uh, this uh, Virginia's boyfriend just said, came in and said, where's Clayton? He said, he's upstairs. I said, I'm gonna kill him. I'm gonna kill him. He, my girlfriend won't go to bed with me anymore. I'm going to kill him. And wow. so he came upstairs with the intent of getting me. And I think he met the, the angels at the front door. Mm -hmm. He met the guardian angels because he ran. He never knocked on my apartment. He ran and slammed the door and was gone. 
And so that's why I say mm. there's so many times that that God protects us we don't even know about. Mm -hmm. uh, but that was exciting. I mean, just to think about the fact yeah. that that uh, hey, greater mm. is He that is us than He that is the world. Mm -hmm. And so you can go to the darkest, dimmest, darkest place over in the earth. You can go to the cities, and God will protect you. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's really powerful. Well, that's all the questions I had for okay. the interview. So. Thanks for sharing those stories. Thank you for having yeah. the opportunity. Yeah, and for all the time you've put in here and also I think the inspiration you've been to so many people. I know there's been a lot of volunteers come through here mm -hmm. serving at your school, in your church, what you're doing here. I, I think that's really powerful. Mm -hmm. And really want, really want these stories to get out there. So thanks for joining mm -hmm. us. Thank you.